Hey, what's up, y'all? Y'all know my slogan. I don't know it all, but I know what I've been through. Now, today, I had to take the time and speak on this spot em, got em, and King Yellow situation, man. This beef is actually a little interesting and weird at the same time because, first off, King Yella is still locked up. Now, I know y'all see him on social media frequently, so y'all like, man, he can't be locked up. There's no way. But, no, in fact, he is locked up, but he did make it his business to tell us that he will be home soon about two or three days ago he told us to put our 3d glasses on because he'll be here now it's kind of crazy like i said because one is from florida others from chicago what in the world is a guy from chicago have to do with a guy in florida right well i'm gonna explain it now spot him got him his beatbox song went crazy and also was turned into a tiktok sensation but if y'all remember, a lot of people from his hometown don't even mess with him. And before he blew up, all he used to do would be seen on social media going back and forth with dudes from his own hometown for the longest. Not only that, he'll be rapping too, doing his little freestyles. And that's actually what got him, you know, in this situation today. But I'm going to just get into some of these IG posts that King Yellow made in his story, as well as 600 Breezy and spot him got him and yes 600 breezy did come out of nowhere and got involved now king yellow did the most because he posted this he said look when y'all see me go on these industry lanes just fall back it's for a reason everything is for a reason the industry it's the year of the real how mfs smoking somebody they never had beef with unless they clout chasing and i actually agree with him on this one because what are you dissing the death for? Definitely somebody you don't even know. It has to be a clout move. Either that or you're trying to be down with something that you have no idea about. And that's what I always tell people because I remember it was a time everybody was saying they were smoking on Tuka. They don't even know where it came from. They just, oh, I'm smoking Tuka, smoking Tuka. It rhymed. They just said it. All right. Now, he also said this. R.I.P. the real Tuka. And if there is a Florida Tuka, F you mean R.I.P. him too. We putting an end to that smoking MFs. This stuff old to y'all but new to me. No pass and no Fs given. Now, I could agree with him. If he's sitting there and saying, yo, we putting an end to how we smoking all the dead ops or whatever the case may be, I agree with that because y'all know if you've been tuned into this channel, I've been saying for the longest, dissing dead ops or dissing dead people, period, is a no-go, man. These people have loved ones. And not only that, it's just corny. He can't respond. And not to mention, I find it even cornier if when the man wasn't alive, you wasn't saying nothing. And then out of nowhere, he passed away or get jail time or whatever the case may be. You start dissing him. That's a coward move. That tells me that maybe you were scared. You see what I'm saying? That tells me maybe you didn't have enough integrity or heart to diss this man while he could physically see you or physically respond. All right, why else would you do that? Now, the blog College Kid, which is, I think they're based pretty much in Chicago, they reposted the fact that King Ella is dissing Spot him, Got him for making the whole Tuka, you know, analogy in the freestyle. After that, 600 Breezy, he decides to put his little two cents in, and he says this. He said the N word, you don't even know Tuka. And which I found it kind of funny because if in fact he doesn't know Tuka, it is kind of weird that he's defending him. But at the same time, I could see why he's defending it. Because if nobody's going to say something, somebody has to say something. That's my analogy. Because he is, he does have a point. This man is not even from Chicago. Why are you talking about you smoking on Tuka? Why are you saying you smoking on anybody from Chicago and putting yourself in a beef that doesn't even include you? Why would you even want to inherit that? Alright, so um pretty much uh King Yella he kind of reposted it, whatever the case may be, and put in his story. He put his little titles or whatever he put over it. He said F the industry, real N-word takeover. Then he added 600 breezy. He told him that he wanna box when it takes 75 percent. He said, he said, I'll leave you with a little money for getting Drake's kids knocked off your face. Now you know that's kind of weird kind of harsh but you know what it is 
Then he also added 600 Breezy and said this. He said, you've been, you know, he put the eggplant and he said, eating under King Yellow Post for a week now. You miss me, B word, with two exclamation marks. He said, we're going to set up that boxing match as soon as I get out. He put boxing emojis. Then he said, let's show the fans why you don't bark in person. Just keep that little tail tucked and keep taking them bubble baths before you link with Drake, you rainbow AMF. Kind of funny. I find it funny how everybody always dissing your boy 600 Breezy when it comes to that whole Drake situation. It was kind of, that was, you know, I thought, I pretty much thought 600 was out of here, but that's a whole other story. Now, King Yellow also said this. He said, after all this death from the past and during the pandemic, I'm going to say starting now, every N word that this dead people is lame is F. Let in words rest in peace 100 now i'm kind of mad that it took dudes to die it took a lot of the guys to die before people actually starting to realize this this and the dead people is lame it's been lame but better late than never i guess because if he could start a movement he could get people on his side and whatever other side to come together and actually stop this in the day in which i think may be very much impossible because there's a lot of it's a lot of bodies it's a lot of everything invested in um that whole drill culture which is sad man um king vaughn hit it on the head god bless his soul before he passed away he said everybody pretty much gonna have to die before everything is anything is settled and which is the truth because everybody has somebody that passed away in the drill culture if you really have in the drill culture nine times out of ten you have somebody that passed away and what's happening is you want your get back you want your retaliation I tell people all the time that pain is something that you can't replace. So a lot of people is remembering that pain. It hurts. It, it, it hurts to see somebody that they know had part in, you know, getting their loved ones out of here. And they got to see them just carry on like nothing happened, living their best life. All right. Um, in the next slide, King Geller pretty much told 600 Breezy, he added him. And he said, what's up, P? you know that word uh what else uh he also put what else he put the rest of, he put the tuka he put rest in peace tuka across the video that spot him got him actually was freestyling and said his name in you know and then he added him he said come to chicago and perform this lame a boy get your clout back by dropping another hit not this way you look goofy and you a op eggplant rider I pretty much know what you're talking about. Um, and let me see. Lastly, man, not lastly, but 600 Breezy, he also took to his Instagram story and he reposted somebody that said this on BD, he never met Tuka in his life. Big A Goofy. He ain't even know Tuka. Um, that's what 600 Breezy put over the picture. And then he also said, I forgot about that. He make himself look stupid. All right, then they laugh, of course. Then last but not least, your boy spot him, got him. He took to his Instagram story and he said this. I'm from Florida where Tuka weed, y'all homie, a worldwide pack. If anything, don't care for the media or the old song. I got more money than you, old A N-word. Get off my, you know, leave me alone, Mr. Yellow, whatever he calls it. Now... I don't know, man. I don't know how to feel about this. I know how to feel about it. I just feel that maybe these guys need to have a, a common sit down because it's, it's clear as day that it may have been a miscommunication. Um, I know that a lot of people, when it comes to that whole marijuana situation, these guys put whatever on the packaging. So maybe he can be talking about something that he's actually smoking and they smoke out there in Florida. Maybe. Maybe he tried to be funny. Who knows? All right. But. Also, look how things escalated, man. Because after all this was said, like I said, 600 Breezy put his two cents in. So it went from two guys having a disagreement about something to now another guy stepping in. And look how that whole that whole negativity just spread fast, fast, faster than ever. You see what I'm saying? And that's all it takes, man. Like I said, nobody should be dissing the dead. If, the, if he was, in fact, doing it, and just being funny I don't know But no one should be dissing the dad And number two How you gonna diss somebody That's not even from your hometown You start inheriting a beef That you are not even a part of 
all that does is open up a can of new worms and now you have beef with all the bds or whoever and everyone that too is associated with why because you want to sit there and you want to just make a cool bar that's corny i really don't get it it shows how much these rappers really be followers they follow trends i remember back when chief keith oh uh, he had the 300 song when it first came out and it first came out that whole Tuka 300 guess what every young dude in new york claimed they were smoking on Tuka, and they didn't even know what that meant they legit thought it was another word for marijuana when it wasn't but that's how that's what it tells you when you stealing a whole nother city's lingo and end up getting involved with something that you don't even know about is because you stealing lingo why are you still another another whole coast another city why would you even want to do that that remind me of when um a, another thing atlanta dudes when they first started buzzing everybody start sounding like dudes from atlanta come on man matter of fact look at young ma god bless the dad fbg duck when he was alive he ran into her and he had to check her she didn't want no smoke or because she wanted to say that she's smoking on Tuka and didn't even know what she was talking about. Or maybe she did. She just didn't think that she was going to come across these dudes' past. Once again, that just goes to show you how much that these followers, I mean, these rappers are really followers. You know, um, but like I said, man, I hope they clear that up. We don't need to see no more body dropping. There's actually a war going on outside that we really need to be paying attention to it's a lot going on within our government it's a lot going on outside right now we really don't need to be warring with each other we need to be warring against the big machine the biggest gang of them all y'all know what that is police but like i said i'm not gonna promote any violence man i hope these two guys hash it out y'all let me know in the comments how y'all feel do y'all think he was really talking about tuka or maybe he was really just talking about you know a florida weed pack that he had no he really didn't know he really didn't know it was a tuka but it's hard to believe that you like you can't sit here and tell me you don't know what smoking on a tuka mean man like everybody in their mother been saying that for the longest all these rappers you gotta know what it mean the fact that you said it you know exactly what it mean but let me know how y'all feel man don't forget to like comment share and subscribe hit that bell so you're notified every time we drop new content and remember as long as y'all keep on watching I'm going to keep on dropping. I'm out.